Do you know that Malaysian employers are labelled among the stingiest in Southeast Asia? Like, do you know that the starting pay for some fresh graduate is just 1,000 ringgit? In this video, we want to talk about this problem of low salary among Malaysians fresh grad. What went wrong? And lastly, I'll be sharing some real proven tips on how you can get a higher salary as well. If you have any friends who are about to graduate or are looking for a higher salary, do share this video with them. Do it now. Based on the Department of Statistics of Malaysia, it is said that the fresh graduate salary in 2020 dropped from the range between 2000 to 2005 to merely 1000 to 1500 ringgit. They say that this is due to the pandemic. The economy is bad. Is it really true? Let's take a look at some data prior to 2020 before all this pandemic. Based on a report by Bank Negara in 2018, after adjusting for inflation, the real starting monthly salary for most most fresh graduates has actually declined since 2010. The salary of fresh graduates with a degree went from 1,993 ringgit in 2010 to 1,983 in 2018. That's a drop of 0.5%. While fresh graduates with diploma went from 1,458 ringgit in 2010 to 1,376 ringgit in 2018. That is a drop of 5.6%. Then for master's degree, Holders, their starting salary went from 2,923 in 2010 to 2,707 ringgit in 2018. That's a drop of 7.4%. The truth is this whether or not there's a pandemic, Malaysian fresh graduate salary has been on a declining trend since 2010. I guess the pandemic simply accelerated the decrease. It's really sad to see the salary of a fresh graduate can reach the lows of 1,000 ringgit a month. That is like some low skill labour job way. And I really wonder how they can survive, especially if they are living in Kuala Lumpur. Some suggest that maybe Malaysians are too lazy, that's why the pay is too low. No, I don't think so. I see so many people doing grab and many of them also open stalls at the roadside to make some extra money. I even meet many people who are actually working two jobs just to earn a little more money. So what went wrong? First, the lack of high skilled job creation. It is said that between 2000 2010 to 2017, every year we have an average of 173,457 fresh diploma and degree graduates who are ready to join the workforce. But the net employment gain in high skill jobs is only 98,514 per year. Based on data, our economy is just not creating enough high skill job roles to cater to the Malaysian fresh grad population. A study by Kazana Research Institute also found that 95% of young workers in unskilled jobs and 50% of those who are in low-skilled manual labour are actually overqualified. That's like someone who graduated with a medical degree but because there's no employment for him, so the only thing he can do is to be a waiter in a cafe. Don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with being a waiter. It's just that the person doesn't really want to be a waiter but he's forced to become a waiter simply because there's not enough employment opportunity in his field. And that's what's sad about it. No wonder so many brilliant people in Malaysia decide to leave to find better opportunities opportunity in other countries. You can't blame them, right? So it's not about Malaysians being lazy. The job market is actually bad. The truth is, I'm also not very surprised by this because over the years, when we look at many of the business that are growing in Malaysia, are the kind that are mainly reliant on low-skill labour. Even when it comes to our tech industry, well, many of our tech industry are actually manufacturers rather than the kind that own a brand or technology. And our government policy doesn't seem to be encouraging enough for the growth of high skill job. With this kind of trend going on, it almost feels like there's no point of going to university, right? Study so much, but get paid like that, might as well go and sell chak kway teow in the restaurant. You probably can earn a lot more money. Second, Malaysian employers are really, really quite kiam siap actually. Hey, I'm, I'm not kidding. This one, data backup one, I show you, I show you. Based on the Bank Negara report in 2018, when comparing productivity and wage level across economy, they found that Malaysians employer really pay their employees less for the same productive level. To illustrate this point more clearly, if a Malaysian worker is producing an output worth of one 
1,000 USD, the worker will be paid 340 USD for that output. But when it comes to economies like US, UK, Australia, Germany, and Singapore, who are the benchmark, their workers who produce 1,000 USD in output, they would be paid 510 for that output. It's not Malaysian young people lazy, oh. It is really, our employers are generally more kiam siap. No wonder Malaysian employees tend to feel unappreciated for the work that they do lah. By the way, do you know which industry is the worst? Wholesale, retail, trade, F&B and accommodation. They are the most underpaid in Malaysia when compared to the benchmark countries. Having said that, having said that, I know there are some employers who are actually quite generous. Actually, the wage and productivity gap has been improving in Malaysia. In fact, the real wage growth has been outpacing productivity growth, meaning employers are willing to pay more for the output of their staff. However, there is a problem. Things are really getting more expensive because of inflation. And that's why employees still don't feel that they are being paid well because although their wage is growing, but things are getting even more expensive faster. So buying power is reducing. I bet you feel that, right? I live in KL. The day I go and eat the noodle that I like to go eat, uh, from 6 ringgit increase to 6.50. The price increase is almost 10%. But salary, we're going to increase 10%. Young Malaysians are not being lazy. It is actually a systematic problem. And I can go on and on talking about this. But all this, we cannot do anything about it, right? Like we always say, if you can't depend on the system, you gotta depend on yourself. So the first thing you can do is observe the market and understand what the market needs. What kind of high paying job position do you see the most in today's market? Personally, I find companies are always looking for digital related work and they're willing to pay for it like digital marketers, web developers, software engineers, UI UX developers and so on. If you're thinking, I did not graduate from this field, it's okay because there's internet. Today you can easily learn these skills online without even going to university. University. You can use Skillshare, Udemy, Coursera, and other sites. All you need is just an internet connection and probably 100 ringgit or less. And the good thing about this kind of role is this, the employers usually care very little about the degree. What matters is your capability. So having a portfolio to back up your ability to do the work is way better than having a degree. If you don't like online learning, you prefer something face-to-face. -face. There's even a free programming school in Malaysia today called the 42KL. It provides you with scholarship to learn as long as you pass their logic tests and their bootcamp and all of it free of charge. And the good part is their projects are real industry problems faced by companies. Their students are almost instantly hired after their studies. And yes, it also comes with a pretty high salary. Personally, I think the future of work is closely related to technology, regardless of whatever field that you're in. So learn some digital skill set. It can make you more valuable in the job market. Second, always negotiate your salary. Do you know that according to research, women who consistently negotiate their salary earn at least 1 million more over their lifetimes on average than those who do not. Yes, negotiating salary is a skill that you have to master, period. Often for an employer, giving you a raise is better than, say, firing you because employee turnover is actually very high cost, provided that your role in the company is valuable and you can prove it. You should negotiate for your salary. I know many people find it difficult to raise this subject with their manager but it is important that you do it because it is a matter of a million dollars so don't lose a million bucks just because you're shy certainly when it comes to negotiating your salary you got to be skillful about it it's not a one-off event thing you will need to plan and get prepared but it is worth it if you want us to do a video about negotiating salary let us know in the comments below third seek for foreign employment opportunity today there are many remote work opportunities available i know many people who are living in Malaysia, but they are actually employed by foreign companies and often they are handsomely paid in USD. Sometimes you may come across a job posting or a friend may refer the person to you. But if you don't have that opportunity, the best way is to begin by offering your skills as a freelancer. I know friends who actually offer digital marketing service as a freelancer to international company and eventually they were offered a permanent employment position with US company to work remotely. So if that's the route you want to take, consider using platforms like Fiverr or Upwork to offer your service in the international market. And you can also get involved in certain online communities like those on Discord group and offer to contribute your skill set. You will never know where the next opportunity will lead you. These are some real proven tips that I've seen people doing and help them to land some high paying job. It does involve you putting some effort
effort. But that's how it is, right? There's no free lunch in this world. You gotta work for it. Actually, whether the pay is high or low, you still have to work. So why not do a little bit more and get paid better? However, if you're interested in the more entrepreneurial path, you can check out this video about how I built seven income streams in three years.